160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to this video. Today, we're going to be doing a review of this Chinese import MIG 250G from ST Welding Tools. Uh, now, a few things. First of all, I purchased this with my own money. Um, this was not sent as a sample. I have no allegiance, no communication with this company. I was just a customer. I purchased this uh, single unit through Alibaba directly from the factory. Uh, I paid just under $300 to have it shipped to me. Uh, I'm not going to post a link because I have no affiliation with this company. But if you do want to find this, uh, if you go to Alibaba and you search MIG-250, it's going to come up. Uh, I actually negotiated with them. They originally wanted $450 including the shipping fees. Uh, I managed to get that down to $300 shipped to my door. So this is going to be kind of an all-encompassing review of this machine. And I'm going to be comparing it to the uh, Everlast uh, Power MIG. Um, that's a well-known Chinese MIG machine that uh, is available on the market. You know, if you guys watch uh, videos by Chucky2009, you'll know he that he's basically a walking infomercial for Everlast. Uh, and he believes in their products. And I've used several of them myself, and they're very good. So we're going to check this out. The main reason I went this direction rather than buying either a name brand unit or uh, a name brand Chinese unit is because this thing has a whopping 100% duty cycle at 195 amps and a 60% duty cycle at 250 amps. And I couldn't find anything for less than $1,200 or $1,300 um, that is from a better known brand, even a better known Chinese brand like Everlast or AHP uh, that could do this. So I figured I would take a gamble with my own money and see if this thing was worth a shit. And so, as you can see, it's already unboxed. Uh, the reason for that is I want to take it all apart for the video, make sure I actually had everything I needed uh, to shoot this video. And it's a good thing I did. Uh, this thing arrived in a box that was just falling apart. In fact, when I saw it, I was really worried that uh, the welder itself was going to be damaged. It was, all the stuff was just thrown in there. Um, it had four little pieces of foam, one on each corner, I guess eight little pieces of foam, one on each corner, uh, and that was it, and most of that foam was torn up. Um, the other thing is, coming out of the box, uh, we got the welder, we got a wire brush, just kind of the standard wire brush slash hammer deal. Uh, we got this interesting face mask, I've never seen one of these, it actually was a flat sheet that folds up and these holes lock in. Um, but obviously we're not going to be using that. Another interesting point is that the plug, this came with a Euro round style plug. Um, I told them I was in the U.S., they knew it was coming to the U.S., it is a single voltage uh, 220 machine, but it came with this Euro adapter, so I had to spend 15 bucks and buy one of these plugs from Home Depot. Uh, if you guys go this route, just be advised, green yellow is ground, blue is black, and brown is white. Um, they don't use the standard wiring convention uh, that we do. Uh, let's take a look at some of the accessories that came with it. Uh, this is a dual uh, MIG stick machine. Um, and it has these standard uh, DINs small, like 3 8 I think, style connectors. Uh, this is the stick welding lead. As you can see, it's not even... Uh, oh, I guess it might be. It's 6 feet long. And uh, it's got this weird, like, ratcheting type clamp. It's very loose, bounces around. Um, it does have a good good amount of strength to it, but it's definitely not as nice of a clamp as, say, the one that came with my AHP or that comes with, um, like, an Everlast machine. It also comes with a ground clamp. The ground clamp itself is just stamped steel. It's pretty standard. But what's crazy is that this is the ground clamp is maybe five feet long. I can't even stretch my arms out all the way holding it, um, which is really kind of annoying because you basically have to have the machine right next to whatever you're working on uh, to get a good ground clamp. Now, this machine, uh, compared to like say a Harbor Freight unit, has a removable proper Euro style MIG gun. It has this connection, the multi-port connection. Um, this is pretty standard. I've seen this on other Chinese welders. The uh, trigger has a nice good feel to it. Feels good in the hand. It's very solid. I took it apart. Uh, it comes with one extra set of consumables. Um, and this one is about 10 feet long. Uh, this plastic piece is kind of, 
kind of jankety. Like it doesn't sit, the cable doesn't sit in there very well. But once you uh, put it into the machine and tighten it up, it's, uh, it's actually pretty stable. Now, the machine itself came mostly undamaged, a few scrapes and scratches, and this bend right here. Now, this bend doesn't look like it was from shipping. It looks like somebody stuck a screwdriver in and pried it apart, which makes me think it was probably during manufacture that it was damaged. Um, otherwise, it's got an on and off switch in the back, a standard gas uh, quarter inch barb fitting in the back. And up here, it's got controls and this nice little flappy door. All in all, not super heavy. If we turn it around, you can see in here that's where the uh, wire goes. And I'll bring you guys in for a close up here in a minute. But it's nice because the wire uh, holder is all metal. There's, uh, there's no plastic pieces other than like the parts you touch. All the actual parts are, uh, are metal, which is nice to see on something that theoretically can do 250 amps. Now, as I bring you in here uh, into the machine, just take a look right in here. There's a button for uh, spooling out wire. There's a MIG and MMA switch, which is MIG and stick. As you can see, there's the two DINs connections right here and your, uh, your main um, MIG connection down here. This plastic is real chintzy, uh, but the knobs do have a nice smooth feel to them. It feels like they used uh, pretty decent pots. And uh, you have current control, a current meter, voltage control, uh, and uh, wire speed. All in all, from the outside, this feels really cheaply made and like, you know, even, even worse than Harbor Freight quality. Uh, you know, the, the accessories that come with it are, are really pretty bargain bin too. Again, I've only paid 300 bucks for this thing, but you know, until I actually see if it can weld or not, it's, it's kind of up in the air. The other thing is this unit does not come with a regulator, uh, which is kind of annoying. So I used a regulator I had from my AHP machine and I had to go and buy some fittings. And so between the fittings, the plug, um, and uh, the hose, I probably spent about 50 bucks just to be able to use, and the cost of the regulator, just to be able to use this machine here at the house. Um, so unlike Everlast or Miller or whatever, where you can pull them out of the box and basically get going, this machine uh, definitely requires some assembly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, close this up. I'm going to get this cover off of the machine and we can take a look at the guts of this thing and see if they're as janky as kind of the outside is. Now the inside guts of the machine are actually pretty decent. All of Everything is heat shrunk. It's got temp sensor right there. All the wires are carefully routed. Um, I see a little bit of the uh, kind of traditional hot glue that's left by, uh, by Chinese factories, but all the IGBTs are nice. All, everything is routed nicely. Um, the solenoid is good. You know, the hose is a good quality hose. We've got a giant heat sink over our capacitors. We got our um, GBTs right there, the copper leads, this is a good size, you know, all the electronics appear to be Chinese made, but they do appear to be, you know, good. The boards are well spun. There's not uh, any kind of, I mean, it, it looks like a good board. Like all the connections are nice and firm. There's no like kind of weird garbage -y, uh, you know, just shit that gets left over. The inside of this machine actually um, is a lot better uh, leaves a lot better of an impression than the outside of the machine. So there's nothing really left to do but to put this thing together and uh, see if we can't weld some stuff. So now we are ready to weld, uh, do a little weld test. And uh, a few things that are important to note. You can only use a, uh, a big reel style 10 pound roll uh, of wire. In this machine you can't use one of the small two pound rolls so make sure you do that. The other thing that's kind of annoying is that there is a current meter on the front of the machine, but it doesn't actually show you anything unless you're, you're actually welding. Um, so I got the GoPro set up looking at that. So you just kind of, uh, your voltage and your uh, wire feed 
adjustments are basically blind. There's no, uh, there's no, nothing that tells you what you're, uh, what you're actually doing. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, um, these little angle iron. Uh, this is maybe like what three quarter inch by three quarter inch angle iron. Uh, it's an eighth inch thick, and we're just gonna do a nice little weld right up on top and and uh, see how this, see how this thing does. And yes, I know I should be wearing, you know, a jacket and whatever the hell all else, but it's quite warm out here and. We're not going to be doing a ton of welding, just uh, a little bit to check out this machine. Now, I'm running a 30 thousandths wire. I got it from Harbor Freight. When I ran online on welding forums, it's actually pretty good. It's the only thing I get locally today. That's what we're going with. Now, I got it set to 5 on the voltage for the MIG side and 5 on wire speed. So let's just see how she welds. So the issue there was I, uh, I over-tightened the, uh, the roll a little bit and the motor was just spinning through. So now we should be able to weld. Wow, that actually puts down a really nice bead really quick. So let's see if I can Kind of show that to the camera with a little bit more light. Uh, we'll zoom in here in a moment, but basically right there on the GoPro, you can see uh, that is a, a really smooth bead with really good penetration. Um, so eighth inch steel, I'm only on like the uh, number three setting and wire speed is at about four and this thing is just cooking. turn this around so it faces the camera. Uh, I mean, these are basically textbook MIG welds. Um, it looks like we're getting pretty good penetration. It's not running on top. Let's, uh, let's see if we can step this up a notch. So what I got right here is uh, fairly thick steel. Um, this is probably gonna be like, not quite a quarter inch, but uh, probably pretty close. This is, I mean, it's definitely thicker than one eighth. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to weld it to this piece of tube, just, just like that. I mean, that's, that's definitely got a lot more, uh, a lot more heat to it. I mean, I'm getting it to bend a little bit up off the surface. But uh, that's three little tacks and that thing is on there pretty solid. So let's just see if we can't burn through some stuff. But uh, it's not burning through it. So what happens if we turn this all the way up to 250 amps? I mean, it's just feeding it straight through the, uh, through the piece of metal into the other side. Now over here you can see where I lifted off. Uh, it actually did a really nice job of kind of filling in that gap. And speaking of filling up gap, let's see if we can fill up the, uh, the top of this. You guys can see that if we lower the, uh, the temperature, or lower the voltage, excuse me, and uh, put up the wire feed speed a little bit, we can easily fill in, because this was like a one inch tube, one inch ID tube, something like that. And it's just carefully and slowly filling it in uh, without really much of a, much of a concern there. Um, so even at uh, kind of a lower temperature, it still welds really, really nicely. All of the welds here are, uh, are really, really clean. And now this is kind of thinner wall stuff over here. And we're gonna see if we can not just kind of uh, butt weld these guys together real quick. So I'm gonna turn temperature to about a four, leave the wire speed at four, and we'll just tack this together real quick. I mean, that just runs a really, really nice bead without any fucking concerns at all. The real question is, can this thing live up to its duty cycle? And so if we crank this back up all the way, 
I'm gonna see if I can't run a few uh, a few beads on this just piece of sheet. This is probably three eighths or even a half an inch thick, and it's just uh, just standard mild steel sheet. We I bought this to use as a uh, gun target, and whether or not it's got some welds on it, it's not gonna make much of a difference. That's a lot of heat. I mean, this was hot enough to get warped because this was a perfectly smooth plate before. There you go. So a few kind of closing thoughts on the Chinese welder. The shipping was shit. I arrived in a damaged box. Uh, it was absolute garbage, even compared to my HP welder. I mean, it was just barely packed in there. Uh, you're gonna have to go out and buy a, uh, an argon regulator. You're gonna have to uh, cut and redo the plug. Um, it only accepts 10 pound uh, spools of wire. Uh, it may accept a five pound if it comes on the big roll, not the little roll, because you need the, the two and a half inch, or like the two inch uh, centerpiece. The ground cable is pretty much garbage and super short. Uh, the stick welding lead is pretty garbage too. All in all, when you first touch this thing, when you pull it out of the box, you think, oh my God, did I just blow $300 on a piece of garbage? But the truth is, this thing welds just as good as uh, any, any quality welder, MIG welder I've ever used. Uh, we're running C25 gas, uh, actually all the way across the garage through a long ass hose without any problems turned all the way up. This is uh, about half inch steel and it, it burnt into it pretty good. I would have uh, absolutely no qualms about using this thing to stick together stuff that's close to half an inch. Uh, the smaller stuff, the stuff that I normally work on, eighth of an inch or thinner. I mean, on real low settings, it just burnt right through it. Um, I didn't even bother testing the stick functionality. Uh, I have the Alpha TIG, which does stick for me. It does it really well. I don't have any reason to think that this guy wouldn't do stick very well, but I like to be able to set current. Really, the only downsides of this welder having used it is that the wire feed speed is pretty arbitrary, but that's true of most welders, but I can't, I don't know what the voltage is actually set at. So I had the GoPro facing the welder while I was welding to see um, what it was actually displaying, what we were actually using while we were welding, and it'll be interesting to review the video but it would be nice to have an actual display that says, hey, you're currently set to, you know, I don't know, 26 volts or something, right? Because MIG, MIG is, on, is on voltage. That's kind of a small niggle. I mean, all the other welders kind of in this price category have like one or two positions or maybe like a, like a four position switch, but you don't really know what, what kind of power it's using there either. All in all, all in, I have probably about $350 in this thing, all said and done, obviously not counting the, the tank but even counting the plug and the regulator and some of the other stuff I had to buy for it. Um, I'm super impressed. Uh, the only comparable power welders that you could buy on the market uh, from name brand or Chinese name brand companies are gonna be right around $1,000, which is just about three times what I paid for this. There are gonna be fanboys that are gonna come out and say, blah, 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 you know, I wanna have a Miller, and that's fine. If you wanna spend the money on an American-made Miller machine or a high-end Chinese machine like the HP or Everlast, uh, you're not gonna be disappointed. Those are excellent machines. But those of you who are looking to save a buck everywhere you can, like I am, uh, and are kind of curious to try out new vendors, new technologies, this is it. It looks like garbage, it feels like garbage in the hand, but the minute you start welding, it did an excellent job welding. Uh, I look forward to doing lots of projects. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and, and you'll see stuff we make in the future. I'm gonna be using this welder. Um, and you'll see it in live action and I'll probably do a one year and then like a two year review, uh, assuming I still have it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I would say that if you are non-pretentious and you don't really care what something looks like or the fact it's got a cheap plastic bezel or that you're gonna have to buy a real ground clamp at some point, uh, I would say that for under $400, this is the best value welder. Um, 
For those of you who are lucky enough to live in places where you can go on Craigslist and buy, you know, a Miller 211 for like 350 bucks, I would probably say do that. But if you're looking for a brand new welder uh, in this price range, this is definitely the best thing uh, you're going to find. Um, it will also do flux core wire as well. Um, I have not tested that. Uh, I bought this as a dedicated MIG machine, but uh, it will. It does have that functionality as well. All in all, I would say that as a product, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, as a welder, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, there are a few things. The mechanism's a little weird. We have, we have to tighten and loosen the, uh, the roll. Um, the, the outside's kind of janky, but for somebody like me who's a hobbyist welder that's going to do a lot of projects with it, this is, I think, an excellent value for the money. Um, so thank you for watching. Check out my other uh, tool and welding review videos. Make sure you follow me uh, on Instagram and Facebook at Maxworks. Uh, feel free to shoot me a Snapchat also at Maxworks. Uh, make sure you're, if you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, I, I'd appreciate if everybody would hit the like button. I'll let YouTube and me know that I'm doing a good job uh, in making these videos. Please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Like I said, I'm not going to put a direct link to where you can buy this, but if you search on outlets like Alibaba for ST Welding or MIG 250, you should be able to track it down pretty easily. Uh, don't hesitate to shoot me any, uh, any questions you guys might have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.